Well, I gave up on Cyberpunk 2077 shortly after release. I pre-ordered it, played it on day one, and it was pretty much unplayable on my hardware. The bugs were just too much for me, making it unplayable. However, it is a year since the initial launch, and it's now in a much better state than it was then, so I re-downloaded the game recently, and I haven't been able to put it down since. You know, much has been said about Cyberpunk 2077, and a lot has happened in the years since it first came out. You know, at first, reviewers weren't allowed to show captured footage of the game. They were only permitted to show the B-roll that CD Projekt Red provided, and we soon found out why. The game wasn't in a good state on consoles, eventually leading it to being pulled from the PlayStation Store, only for it to be reinstated months later. On lower-end PCs, it wasn't much better, and you pretty much had to have an expensive, state-of-the-art PC rig to play the game at all. Now, it's really a shame that the launch panned out the way it did, because under all the bugs and nonsense of the launch, there's a really great game there waiting to be played. So the main campaign is fairly short, coming in at around the lower or mid-20 hours, but that isn't taking into account the numerous side quests, and the side quests are really rich in the storytelling, and any one of them could be in the main campaign story. So if you sat on Cyberpunk 2077 for all this time, you know, then many of the bugs have been patched out and numerous quality of life upgrades have been added. And what we're left now is an enjoyable roller coaster of an RPG in a rich and vibrant world that is begging to be explored. So you play as V, a mercenary who lives in Night City. You can also start off at three points. So a street kid, a corpo or a nomad. So I'm going to be describing the game from the perspective of the street kid. Although I think over time I'd like to go back and play through as the other life choices. You know, the game is just that compelling. You know, early on you team up with your friend Jackie Wells and pull off a series of small time jobs before getting sucked into what they call the big time. Unfortunately, they witness a murder of the owner of one of the main corporations who dominate Night City when they're trying to steal a chip. So V has to stash the chip in his head to keep it safe and the image of terrorist Johnny Silverhand, played by Keanu Reeves, is put in there with it. And Johnny Silverhand's image is programmed to take over the new host body meaning V will slowly be deleted, so it's a race against time to find a way to stop this from happening, all while unravelling the mysteries of Night City. Well, the story in Cyberpunk 2077 is compelling, full of action, but also full of quieter moments packed full of character development. It takes a few hours to get past the introduction to the point where you can venture out on your own and pick your own path, but there's a clear main story campaign, and you can beeline this and power your way through the game if you want to, but there are benefits of taking your time and getting to know the world around you. So I think if you mainline the story then you get two to three options for the end of the game, but if you invest in meeting others, branching out then this expands into five separate endings, including the secret one. So I was really impressed with the dense nature of Night City. It's one of the most immersive worlds I've played, packed full of characters, people chatting, characters seemingly living their own lives. You know, I walked out of my apartment at one point only to find the cops banging on the door of one of my neighbours, demanding he come out and let them know if he was okay. You know, I don't know if he was a fellow cop, but the whole interaction seemed really natural, so it felt deeper than most, if not all video game interactions, that I'd had before. Well, Cyberpunk 2077 is played from the first person, which is a big factor in terms of how immersive the game feels. So when you're interacting with the weird and wonderful characters in the game, you're doing so from your perspective, looking through V's eyes. So there's many an occasion where you're wielding a gun and the game moves into first person shooter mode. However, first and foremost, this is an RPG with elements of first person shooting. So the FPS features of the game aren't quite good enough to be the central mechanic. You know, don't get me wrong, the shooting feels pretty good, but it does feel off when compared to the masters of FPS like Destiny 2 or Apex Legend or the new kid on the block, Halo Infinite. Structurally, Cyberpunk 2077 is pretty different from other RPGs. The main questline can be focused on, but before too long you can branch out into one of the many side quests and get lost down a path. The side quests are of such quality, it feels a little bit strange to call them side quests. You know, the game does such a great job of distracting you with these quests as well, given you have a phone and multiple quest givers are simply falling over themselves, calling you constantly, offering you work, as your reputation starts to grow in Night City. Yeah, it's well worth jumping into the side stories. The characters in Cyberpunk 2077 are rich, offering great complimentary stories, and they're going to make your playthrough really, really enjoyable. It's a really ambitious approach to the game design, offering you a dense sandbox full of different directions and paths to travel. Thematically, everything is pulled together really well in the Cyberpunk overarching story and world, 
so side missions don't really ever feel out of place or tacked on. So at times the game can feel a little bit like Grand Theft Auto, but from a first person perspective. You're going to hop into a car, drive around the city, come across some thugs trying to mug an unsuspecting passerby, only for you to go in there and finish off a gang with a shotgun. Beware local cops though as they're going to come down on you thick and fast with force. You know, the scale of Night City is hard to comprehend until you get in there and explore. So you've got the corporate playground with tall skyscrapers, you've got slums and the homeless, outskirt deserts and green parts to discover. You know, the verticality of the play space is huge too. With Night City carved into many layers for you to discover, you've got above ground and underground as well. So it's bright, it's neon, it's brash, full of advertisements, sex and violence. It's overwhelming, but it's often beautiful as well. So it's easy to see why the game was in development for so many years and unfortunate that it came out a little hot. Looking past the action part of the game and peeling back the first person shooter layer, you've got a complex and deep RPG full of choice, so action set pieces are built up through the quieter moments in conversation where we get to know characters through our perspective and player choice is often spoken about in marketing for games, but here player choice is front and centre and has a massive impact on your playtime. In Cyberpunk 2077, from speaking to NPCs, setting up V to go into battle and choosing how you want to go into a fight. So all guns blazing, stealthy hacker, sit back and snipe, or you can use your charm. Cyberpunk 2077 is a gaming experience that offers a deep and meaningful interaction, complex storytelling, and is full of genuinely thrilling set pieces. The choices you make early on in the game is going to impact your playthrough later, and it may not be immediate and sometimes maybe 20 hours after you made that decision. However, know that your dialogue and choices and your actions have consequences in the world of Night City. I'm definitely here for it. So there isn't your traditional class system in Cyberpunk 2077, so instead you invest your points in different attributes to take V in the direction you want to take them. This includes body, intelligence, reflexes, technical and also cool. Investing in these different systems unlocks vastly different playstyles, which you can respec at a cost at any time. So if you do want to experiment, then you can. Investing in body means you can wield heavier weapons. Intelligence allows V to become a master of hacking, whereas cool can prevent enemies from detecting you. The system is super flexible and definitely promotes experimentation. So combat is really, really good fun. Even though it's not a core first person shooter, it certainly has the guns to compete with the best of them. So the guns have a weight to them and although controlling V in the battlefield doesn't feel quite right, although I think it can be overlooked given the sheer scale of the game. The combat in the game is merely the starter, it's the RPG and the interactions with the other characters that make the game truly memorable. So I tried Cyberpunk 2077 when it first came out and it really didn't perform well, you know. I don't have a state of the art PC with the latest hardware, but I haven't come across a game that broke as badly as Cyberpunk 2077 in those first few weeks. Characters were clipping through environments, textures were missing, and all these issues distracted me too much from the narrative. You know, what makes the game special are these narrative moments, and if you're constantly being distracted, these moments aren't going to hit you as they should. Now, 12 months later, with hopefully the worst behind them, CD Projekt Red has a fantastic RPG, and yes, mistakes were made, the game shouldn't have launched on consoles in the state it did, and the game should have been in development until at least summer 2021, to come out in the state the game is now with a 1.3.1 update. So we do have the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X versions hopefully coming in the first quarter of 2022, and that would be a great way to play if the game comes out as intended. You know, I've been playing on PC where the game has been getting multiple patches over time, and I'd say at the moment that is probably the best place to play until we have confirmation of the console versions working as intended. So, so if CD Projekt Red can get the game right on consoles, so this could be a really big hit in 2022. Now I for one hope the game gets the credit it's due, because under the horrible launch and the mountain of bugs, a fantastic game is waiting to be discovered and played. So I'm sure like many people, they either had a bad experience at launch, or heard about the many bugs and were put off by Cyberpunk 2077. So I can happily say the game plays much better now, allowing me to enjoy the wonderful and often thrilling story, the rich world, and interact with the multiple meaningful characters. So if you've been sitting on the fence, I'd say get off the fence because you can pick it up pretty cheap right now, and I would check out Cyberpunk 2077. You definitely won't regret it. So the developer and the publisher was CD Projekt Red. It's available on the PS4, Xbox One, Google Stadia, and PC. 
Well, that is it for my review of Cyberpunk 2077. Actually, there's a really good game there waiting to be played. But trying out a launch, it was really, really tough. Just so many issues at launch, but now it's looking really, really good. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. If you want to join the community, check out the Discord link in the description. Or you can follow me on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.